Ninja Scroll's female character, Kageto, is a wholly unique take on the femme fatale, a woman who is deadly to other men, whether or not she wants to be. Where a femme fatale is typically scheming, immoral, and actively works to bend a man's arm, Kageto doesn't have to lift a finger to be fatal. Kageto does not choose to be hazardous to men, and Ninja Scroll often reveals in small moments just how much this fact of her life truly hurts her. Kageto is a case study in female identity. Can a woman barred from male connection truly be a woman? Is it the joining of man and woman which defines each? And if so, in what alternative ways will a woman prevented from intimacy seek purpose? And can those ways be sufficient replacement for her nature? Though she is a skilled ninja and tags alongside other ninjas of the clan, Kageto's cool aura is shattered surprisingly fast. It's clear from very early on that Kageto is much more vulnerable than she'd make herself out to be. The quickness and brutality with which her ninja company are slaughtered by the film's first demon serves as a heightened example for what violent world awaits Kageto, and she crumbles at first sight of it. From this earliest moment, Ninja Scroll plants the idea that Kageto is filling shoes that don't fit her. The consistency of her isolated moments of sadness and mourning reveal the deeply sensitive belly of this supposedly viperous beast. Kageto, as emboldened as she makes herself out to be, is at her core still a woman, a nature she tries to distract herself from but ultimately cannot forget entirely. After being saved from her own molestation at the hands of a demon by Jubei, the film's samurai protagonist, Kageto joins Jubei as his companion throughout the film, but their bond is a tenuous one. Kageto is a lady, but hardly very ladylike. She is well trained as a ninja herself, as well as cold shouldered and stern, taking little order from Jubei. She's a lone wolf, preferably, but reluctantly joins ranks with Jubei and the old man when met with the prospects of finding out who ordered the slaughter of her company. She is mean-tongued and doesn't take orders, a result of her deadly endowment, a heart cursed with poison, leading every man to ever sleep with her to die. The old man calls her perfect for this amoral world, yet his distant admiration for Kageto is contrasted with her own bitter self-hatred. In his eyes, she may be perfect, but in hers, she is eternally cursed. Kageto, it seems, can never be a woman. She carries a great defense mechanism against lustful demons, but this curse renders her untouchable to any man who she actually loves. Necessarily, love is an emotion which she cannot feel, or at least an emotion she cannot allow herself to feel. Cursed as a poison-hearted woman who kills whatever man she sleeps with, Kageto has, in some ways, accepted a loveless life. Despite her beauty, she cannot love or be loved, lest she kill someone, because her most loving offering is nonetheless an offering of death. Though empowered in a unique way, by her nature, she kills molesters without even trying, Kageto is utterly weakened by her curse. On the surface, Kageto is truly blessed to have her talent. No man can ever violate her and get away with it. But if given the choice to live life free of its effect, she would certainly take it, because it would mean she can finally be a woman. The tragedy of Kageto's unchosen circumstance is that it forbids her from her own nature. By right of her curse, she is completely disallowed from wifehood, motherhood, and in a sense, womanhood altogether. In short, she cannot fulfill her own natural destiny, and as a result, she attempts to do as a man does. To say Kageto is no use as a ninja would be false. She does save Jubei's life from the snake conjuring demon early on in their journey, and her role in holding off the deadly storm of wasps is notable, but underpinning her veneer of skill and hard shell is a profoundly sensitive and self-loathing woman. She is skilled in combat and magic, but only as an alternative life path to what she actually wants, but feasibly cannot have. Which is why Kageto is at her happiest when given the chance to offer herself to a worthy man she loves, and won't kill in the process. 
They reveal that Jubei's ingested poison can only be cancelled out with another poison altogether, grants Kageto the rare opportunity to serve as a woman, to contribute willingly towards healing, where before she would contribute unwillingly towards death. It's an offer which Jubei denies initially, perhaps out of a respect for Kageto's history of violation, not wanting to be another man on a long list of men to take her body without a second thought, but later realizing what it means to her, that it's her one chance to make a loving offer as a woman, and not as a killer or a ninja or somebody poisonous, he accepts her embrace and grants her the final joy of having been female at long last knowing the mutual feeling of love for once in her life. When is Kageto at her happiest? When she is killing? When she watches others be killed? Or when she is allowed to be a woman, warm and healing? Kageto's false mask of toughness serves only to conceal the immensity of her traumas and self-loathing. A woman constantly coping with the fact that she cannot truly be a woman. The strength she feels is not strength, but necessity. Out of fear that she may kill others, she pushes men away and pretends to like it. But inside, she's crying. Although done out of a perceived necessity, Kageto's rejection of her own femininity only contributes to her inner tension. She's constantly riding the fence of woman and ninja, holding the dam while in the presence of others, and releasing the flood of emotions the moment she's alone. Kageto is not happy as a ninja, she doesn't enjoy a life of playing pretend, trying to be someone who she isn't, and given how truly beautiful she really is, her attempts at rejecting her femininity are wholly unconvincing, both to others and even herself. Jubei's treatment of Kageto reflects the futility of her pretension. She has cast a masculine mold for herself, a mold into which she simply doesn't fit. Jubei turns and walks away from Kageto's empty threats never legitimizing her projections to be reality. She wears the face of a killer, but Jubei doesn't address that face. He gives no power to the woman who she isn't, only to the woman who she is. He doesn't flinch at the pull of her blade, he diminishes her identity as a ninja, and in this way does his small part in reminding her that she is a woman, even when blatantly acting otherwise. Jubei doesn't partake in the illusion of Kageto's false identity, in these moments, it's almost as if he says, I won't talk to the ninja, but I'll talk to you. Ninja Scroll highly values what men and women can offer to each other uniquely, their complementarity that brings purpose to life. Thinking it to be her only feasible path, Kigeto always looks for what value she can offer in combat, as a compatriot to warriors, thus abandoning her sensitivities. But by the end of the film, Kigeto's most unique worth as a woman a worth she has more or less forfeited in her life is the worth that grants her life meaning. Kigeto is given the chance to finally see what it means to be a woman, and it's wonderful. At the same time, Jubei learns more truly than ever what it means to be a man. It is only with Jubei's acceptance of her that Kigeto is at last feminized, and it is only with Kigeto's unique ability to cancel out his poison that Jubei's life is saved. One brings out the best in the other. The woman in Kageto saves the man in Jubei, as the man in Jubei brings out the woman in Kageto. A crucial imagery for this is Jubei's wearing of Kageto's headband as he rides into the heat of battle, emboldened more than ever by her healing touch. A man who has found purpose beyond gold and beyond himself even, and it's a purpose which only a woman could have given him. Ninja Scroll celebrates the unique value of a woman, the value which lustful demons won't know, and a woman hateful of herself will never see. Knowing that she is poisoned, and thus a hazard to all men around her, Kageto withholds herself emotionally, and hides her sensitive side. To this end, she hopes to keep a distance from men, but in this right, she can never be a woman. For much of the film, Kageto holds a biased view of women's role to men both because she has seen the rank exploitations of servile women by her chamberlain, and because she is herself impeded in the realm of intimacy. She cannot offer herself to a man lovingly, so she convinces herself that there is no love anyways, just barbarism and fornication. She weaves the web of lies that this path she is on is what she ought to be doing after all, 
Her value of her own self-worth is then measured by her violent skills, her ability to accompany and serve alongside warriors. Her debt to Jubei, she believes, can only be paid off by being a helping blade, saving his life by means of combat. Never does it occur to her that she has a value outside of combat, because that value has been ravaged and abused by evil forces such that she wishes to forget it altogether. By unfortunate circumstance, she is a woman displaced from her own spots as a woman, so she tries on a new role instead. But the beauty of Ninja Scroll's ending is the rediscovery of Kageto's value, the value she was born with which she hasn't been able to put to use, and the false narrative she's constructed that she's not a woman but a ninja, and to be a woman is to be exploited anyways, falls apart on her deathbed. Kageto is only happy that she can be an antidote to Jubei's poison, a healing presence. The greatest, most honest joy she expresses throughout the entire film is found in these moments, when she can truly feel that she is a woman and she can contribute to Jubei's life in the way only she can. In this way, Kageto finally fills shoes that fit her. She embodies a role that is hers and hers alone to fill, not as a ninja, but as a woman. Previously, she would have been expendable as a ninja, always susceptible to a quick death without so much as the guarantee of a memorial. She could have been another pile of arms in a bloodied field, but in the eyes of Jubei, she is irreplaceable. Her legacy is much more profound as a woman than it ever could have been as a ninja. She saves the life of a good man who she loves, a man who will, in return, truly remember her. In his heart, she is eternal. Jubei will honor her as a woman, where men of authority would before forget her as a ninja. It's frightening to think that she could have been slaughtered just as quickly and mercilessly as the rest of her company at the beginning of the film, and nobody would have cared. Kageto was spared by good luck and by the grace of Jubei, and with the span of life which wasn't guaranteed to her, she makes a short and lasting impression on a man an impression which she never could have made as a ninja. If you did find this video insightful or meaningful, please, please, please consider supporting my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Orion Trips. If you support the page there, you can get early access to new videos like this. If you choose to support, thank you very much. Otherwise, thank you for watching the video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.